How's it going, guys? Salve from Mars Rose Top Thousand. Today is September 30th, 2020. And we're going to completely focus on Disturbance 1, which has a chance of forming just off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. And where this will go, how strong this will be, I'll answer those questions in this video. So let's first uh, talk about Disturbance 1. Let's first look at the water vapor imagery. And as you can see here, there's a lot of thunderstorm activity towards the western portion of the Caribbean Sea. We see a little bit of thunderstorm activity towards the towards the Yucatan Peninsula, and this is associated with a, a small cutoff low that moved over the that moved from south from Texas all the way to Yucatan Peninsula. And it and like I said it two days ago, this will be the triggering force of what of the pretty much the anatomy of potentially tropical storm. Um, gamma, which will move to the northwest, which will combine with these thunderstorms that that are currently in this area towards the northwest, and then it'll be that trigger to create a well-defined eye because this is a disturbance that the National Hurricane Center expects to develop. However, the National Hurricane Center isn't lenient on developing this just yet, is because it's just very disorganized at this point. There isn't really uh, there isn't really an area where it could develop a very well-defined low pressure system since there's since it's very broad and when a so and when an area of lower pressure is broad it's very hard for it's very hard for a single low pressure system to focus one energy in one spot since the energy is so spaced out all throughout the Western Caribbean. We're seeing thunderstorms towards Panama. We're seeing thunderstorms closer to the Dominican Republic, closer to Cuba. And when we have this broad area of thunderstorms, it's really hard for for storms for low pressure to develop when the energy is so spaced out over over a large area and it really makes it difficult for uh well defined rotation to form when there's a or when there's like a ton of different areas of low pressure trying to fight for energy and as a result there isn't a lot of energy um there isn't enough energy in each lower pressure area to the point where the National Hurricane Center could say it's a tropical depression or a tropical storm. However, the National Hurricane Center expects that to change once it pretty much combines with this upper level low that's currently over the Yucatan Peninsula. And once it and once it encounters this upper level, um, sort of this cutoff low that came from Texas, it'll um, the lower level the lower pressure in this area in the lower levels of the atmosphere will meet up with the upper level low and as a result that will create a, a pretty well defined low pressure system since we're seeing a low uh, areas of low pressure in the upper atmosphere while in the lower atmosphere as well this upper this lower level low will will um will pretty much coincide with each other and create a well-defined low pressure system as it goes off the Yucatan Peninsula. So to show you this, let's look at the GFS model to see what's what it's saying. I'm gonna show you guys the 800, the 500 millibar height anomaly. Um, and you can see the main steering current of this will be the uh, ridge of high pressure that's currently over the that's currently over um, just north of May, most of the Caribbean islands and it will steer the area of thunderstorms towards the northwest and this cutoff low will remain in the same area for the most part and if we continue to move forward you see that we're seeing a little bit of blues in this area this is what's expected to be tropical storm gamma or at least uh, tropical depression off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula and the GFS is um and like I said, GFS's main steering current is a ridge, and you might be thinking that this tug in the jet stream could turn it up north to the point where it could impact the US. However, at this point, both of the computer models, the GFS and the European model, aren't in strong agreement that that could happen. However, like I said, it could quickly change. We're going about three days out on this loop, and um, it still could have a chance beyond three days that it, maybe it could turn north. However, like I said, the GFS and the European both aren't agreeing that 
um, that this could turn north, mainly because there's going to be another ridge behind an upper level low that's going to dip through Texas and Louisiana. That's going to come behind it and then pretty much prevent it from turning up north and then take it more towards a southwesterly direction as opposed to going up north along with the dip in the jet stream and the dip in the upper level low that's expected three days from now on Saturday. So so at this point it's unlikely however stay tuned for updates because maybe this could change um however with both the computer models agreeing this will move more towards west and maybe southwest i would i would most likely place my bets that it will mainly stay around the metsco region however continue to stay tuned because as you know weather could quickly change and then if we move continue to move forward we see some of that energy move towards florida and that might bring enhanced rainfall in florida even though the the core of this storm will stay far to the south um to the southwest of florida so keep in mind of that in florida i don't expect i obviously don't expect tropical storm force impacts in florida at this point just maybe enhanced rainfall associated with a tropical potential tropical storm gamma that's going to be over um that's going to be over the yucatan peninsula so watch out for that and then if we move going into five days from now you see that the while the gfs doesn't show it the low pressure is at is right around this area and the gfs isn't very lenient on really strengthening this much beyond a possibly a weak tropical storm if we take a look at the um millibar pressure of this storm at peak the the gfs model takes its peak intensity around 1002 millibars however it's pretty much hugging the coast of the yucatan peninsula so definitely the yucatan peninsula needs to be on high alert for potential a potential flood threat with this storm um even though this may not be a strong storm and then if we and if we continue to move several hours from now, you see that it moves very slowly over the next couple of days. And it's and it's as a result of just very weak steering currents. There isn't really a defined area of uh there isn't really a strong area of a steering current because we're gonna have a we're gonna have pretty much three three um three factors pretty much trying to pull this storm towards a certain direction. We have the ridge over the Caribbean islands that's trying to pretty much steer it a little, maybe a little bit more to the north. We also have an upper level low that's trying to pull it towards the northeast. However, we do have a ridge that's going to build over Texas that's trying to pull it towards the southwest. And as a result, there's going to be very weak steering currents of this. So this could move slowly over the Yucatan Peninsula. And as you know, having slow moving tropical cyclones is a nightmare since they bring a lot of rain over the same area for the hours to potentially days we saw what happened with harvey we saw what happened with sally which happened during this hurricane season slow moving storms are definitely um not something to mess around with since they could dump a lot of rain even if they're um even if it's as weak as the gfs model is stating and then it sort of moves towards the south um, west eventually and then um, I don't like to go six days from now but the GFS is leaning towards bringing this towards the west and then it eventually speeds up once that ridge um, dom um, dominates the um, the southeast US uh, um, and that however the GFS isn't really lenient on strengthening this so um, if we take a look at the European model, the European model is agreeing on this exact, pretty much the exact same thing where we see a little bit of energy form three days from now off the Yucatan Peninsula, but then it weakens and then by day five, it's pretty much almost gone as it just moved over the Yucatan Peninsula and it lost a lot of that energy since it's pretty, it's all over land and far from water to really strengthen this storm um higher than maybe a weak tropical storm so the good news is that the both the gfs and the european are still not leaning on make making this an incredibly strong storm despite the favorable conditions as it heads towards mexico um and i think the reason why it isn't taking this um making this a very strong storm has to do with some of the um upper level winds it's going to deal with because if we take a look at the gfs model um moving towards 
moving towards Saturday and Sunday um, this weekend, um, if we take a look at 200 millibar wind forecast, you see that there begins to be a little bit of wind shear build over this storm. And oh, the GFS model is currently updating now its um, forecasts um, as we speak. So we'll check it out eventually. Maybe this could quickly change. However, you see that there's a, an abundance of wind shear through this region as a result of an upper level low and a pretty big dip in the jet stream over the United States. So that's definitely good news that this won't strengthen much. And also another thing, another factor that the that this storm will have to deal with going towards the Yucatan Peninsula is the dry air. As a result of the dip in the upper level low, there's gonna be a lot of dry air on the back side of it. And the storm is gonna to have to fight it off and the GFS isn't very lenient on strengthening this or this fighting the storm off as because since this storm is so weak, any little wind shear is able to completely disrupt the circulation of this storm, completely disrupt sort of the it, sort of the area of low pressure and sort of tilt it to a point where it can't really strengthen that much. Um, so um, any little wind shear could drastically affect the storm strength. So it's so at this point i would say um with confidence that it seems likely that yucatan peninsula will experience heavy rain fall from this as the main impact from this maybe some wind along the coast and maybe a little bit of some rough surf along the yucatan peninsula however i don't expect major impacts however since it is moving slow i would definitely keep in mind in the yucatan peninsula and um, while the GFS and European are agreeing that this will mainly move slowly over the Yucatan Peninsula and not strengthen that much, the fact that it's moving slowly means that the computer models are detecting that there's going to be a weakness in steering currents and that could make it a little bit more uncertain because with slow moving storms, that means that the steering currents are weaker and that there's a, that, or there's a ton of steering currents that are trying to pull it. So, uh, maybe the um, so maybe this forecast could completely change if one steering current becomes much stronger than the other to the point where it could maybe steer up north so we definitely have to see but however as of right now I expect mainly heavy rain over the Yucatan Peninsula and it's more likely than not to develop into at least a tropical depression or a tropical storm because conditions will be conducive enough in this region however beyond three to four days from now it's going to be very hard for this to continue strengthening because of dry air it's going to be behind this upper level low and again the wind shear and it's going to deal with a lot of land interaction overall for the most part since it's pretty much going to be hugging the yucatan peninsula and the mexico coast so i would keep oh, that in mind if you're along mexico and um as for the u.s i find impact unlikely at this point but that could change now let's so now since tomorrow is October, let's currently take a look at what to expect for the October hurricane season. So you see that this is mainly the um this is mainly the typical track pattern that October storms usually take. They usually form right around the area where tropical storm gamma could form, um just off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, Cuba, and just and pretty much the Western Caribbean Sea. And it ha and it's likely to develop in this area because the upper ocean heat content in that area is just insanely um is just insanely high and you see those temperatures um with depth are very warm so it's pretty much um it's pretty much a ton of fuel for tropical cyclones to develop here during october and you see a lot of these um checks in october because we usually see a lot of dips in the jet stream during this month so it's typical for them to move north sort of like this sandy sort of took a uh, track like this and unlikely a sandy will ever happen maybe in our lifetimes along the east coast it um it seems pretty typical for storms to go up north um like this for the most part in October as a result of dipping the jet streams and just a ton of fuel over, um, um, not fuel, but warm water over this area with depth. So definitely keep that in mind in October. And if we take a look at the um, temperature anomaly for October, you see that there's still, for the most part, the 
entire Atlantic is under warmer than average conditions, which means that we're gonna see a lot more rising air throughout the Atlantic. And as a result, more storms are likely throughout October. And this could, and this likely will beat the 2005 hurricane season as the most active in history. Now, the good news is that there weren't as much major hurricanes um, as I expected, which is definitely good news. Um, however, in terms of storms, this will definitely, this seems like, it seems likely that this will definitely beat the 2005 hurricane season as we're currently outpacing that season by a month. And based off the temperature anomalies and the current La Nina we're in, it seems likely we're going to see a lot more storms in the future. So definitely keep that in mind going into October and make sure to check out the hurricane season. Um, for more hurricane season updates since we're far from over um, when it comes to hurricane season as October could still be a crazy month. Hurricane Michael proved it, Hurricane Matthew in 2016 proved it. So definitely keep in mind along all across the Atlantic. But anyways guys, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more content. Uh, make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to share with friends and family who are interested. And I hope you guys have a good day.